Yes, Naka here. So today, I thought I'd talk about riding your motorcycle in the rain. Now, uh, if any of you uh, follow me on Instagram, you'll notice every once in a while I'm posting uh, pictures in black and white. And that's just my way of saying I was planning on going for a bike ride, but it was raining. I ain't going. I'm depressed. Now, it's not saying I don't ride in the rain, it's just that I don't, I choose not to ride in the rain if I don't have to. So, uh, you know, many years I rode rain, sun, snow, whatever, but after 30 something years of riding, I don't think I have to go in the rain anymore unless I really want to. But I have learned from riding in the rain and racing in it that there's a few techniques that can make it a little bit safer. Now the most important thing is make sure you have good tires. If you have very old tires or tires with no tread left in them, they are going to suck in the rain. Uh, you ever watch those Formula 1 car races when you see the guys hit a little patch of water and spin off into the into the grass or whatever that's what it's going to feel like if you try to hit the brakes with tires with no tread or tires that are so old they're basically having the rubber consistency of a hockey puck now the next thing of course is you know the obvious thing is make sure they're actually you know inflated the proper temperatures you know, and they're actually the correct tires for your bike and so forth. Now, if you have a, a reasonably modern motorcycle, well, chances are you're going to have ABS uh, front brakes, sometimes ABS uh, rear brakes as well, which makes, you know, slowing down a heck of a lot easier. It's not foolproof. The early ABS systems were marginal, and uh, you tend to get a lot of weird pulsating through the uh, the brake fiber which can sort of kind of freak people out and not brake as hard as they should but if you're in a very modern bike the ABS will actually work really good and a lot of bikes are now coming out with what I like to call modes where the bikes make so much power that you can actually have a mode that's set for you know dry conditions high performance uh, conditions, racetrack, and also rain. So if you are out in the rain and you have a bike with a rain mode, put the rain mode in there, you paid for it. Because uh, it's there for a reason. If you don't, well, you're just gonna have to go old school. And old school is being very smooth and very consistent. You don't grab a handful of brakes like this because in the dry the front end dives it's not a bad it's kind of annoying but it's uh, it will survive in the rain there's a good chance that front tire will lock up and you will learn what a what skiddling is all about because you'll be on the the bike will be on the ground and you'll be sliding beside it sliding off into oncoming traffic unfortunately or a tree or a lamppost or a fire hydrant. So when you're in the rain, you want to be very slow and smooth on your braking and your acceleration. Do not grab a handful of throttle. If I grab a handful of throttle, a throttle on this bike right now, you know, I'll probably end up popping a bit of a wheelie and uh, there's a policeman around, I'll probably lose my license. In the rain, there's a good chance that rear tire will break traction and the bike will start going sideways. And if I'm not careful, it will it will get worse and worse and worse until I'm actually spit off. And it's amplified, uh, sorry, it's amplified even worse in corners. And especially going downhill and anywhere where there's standing water. So you have to be extra careful like, for example, I'm coming up here and I'm going to be turning left to this uh, intersection. So, normally in the rain, what I would do is I'd start reducing my throttle. 
be signaling let everyone know that I'm going to be turning hopefully they're not on their phone not paying attention and then I just gently apply my brakes I'm also doing my downshifts very smooth and luckily some guys turn the other way which blocks traffic and then I just smoothly go around the corner not so slow that my bike's chugging like that but smoothly and slow now the other thing too is that you see these uh, stop lines out here in front in the wet they can be worse than a landmine we actually have standards here for the uh, adhesion on uh, crosswalks or zebra crossings as you call them in some parts of the world and those stop lines and in most cases the municipalities are following them but there are a few once in a while they someone grabs a wrong can of paint and when you hit that in the wet you will fall off back in the uh, Back in the uh, 80s when I was riding my old KLR 600, that was my second ever crash in the street was I came around a corner, hit that white line, and fell off. And to give you an idea how slow I was going, I got up and took two steps and shut the bike off. But it literally was hitting a big patch of ice in the rain. Now the other thing to do when you're riding in the rain is you notice I'm riding in you know the standard position where you would actually ride in traffic where you ride slightly to the left you see a lot of people riding here in the middle now in the dry it's not great but it's oh it's acceptable in the wet there is a lot of grease uh, coolant oil whatever that's been dropped here by cars and trucks and whatnot and it's not noticeable in the dry, but what happens in the wet is that it starts to uh, beat up. Uh, you'll actually see that if you're driving, if you're driving in a, in a city, and you pull up to a stoplight or a stop sign. Just take a look, and you'll actually see little bubbles, look like little beads of, of uh, oil sitting on the surface, and that's basically everywhere down the middle of the road. The, the more traffic the road has, the worse actually it will be. Now, in some places, the municipalities actually power wash the streets at a regular institute, incident, but most of them don't. So, probably the first 20-30 minutes of rain, this stuff is going to be bubbling up like crazy. So, if you try to brake, you know, in, this, in the center of the road, you're going to have a, a lot of problems. You might not crash, but you might just scare the living uh, crap out of you. And again, it's like you just brake easily, brake slowly. You know, the, the important thing about riding in the rain is you have to get home. issues with uh, your, your visor fogging up you know you're also going to be wet so if you don't have a proper rain gear you have to deal with uh, cold your body temperature will start dropping over time which means your reflexes reaction times start to drop and the worse it gets the uh, the worse it will be for you uh, if you don't have a rain suit you know if you're not too far from home just get home but if you're traveling a fair bit like one of the cheapest solutions is go to a, a local variety store, go to a, uh, a, you know, a grocery store, go buy a couple garbage bags. Literally put the garbage bag over top of your jacket, you know, like wearing a big green uh, vest, poke your arms through. It's not perfect, but it will, it will keep your core warm. It'll keep your, uh, keep your, uh, the water from like, drop it falling down your back and you know and chilling you too much you can do the same thing you can put uh, plastic bags either over your gloves or more likely 
under your gloves to try to keep your hands warm. It sort of depends, like these gloves are kind of tight. I'd never in a million years get plastic uh, bags underneath them, but some of the other pair of gloves I have, which are just regular leather with uh, just a slight bit of armor, I'd have no problem getting gloves in behind them or getting uh, bags in behind them. So, so there's uh, a lot of things you can do, but the most important thing is to ride as smoothly as you can. Again, watch out for uh, obstacles. Standing water is probably your worst enemy, uh, especially on certain roads. You don't know how deep that puddle might be. It might be, you know, a couple millimeters thick or deep. It could be uh, 20 millimeters or a foot deep. You know, you don't want to find that out. So, what you want to do is, if you have to, you know, drive around puddles and you can do it safely, do it. Also have to be careful of uh, you know running water crossing the, uh, the roadway. You know when you, uh, the ditch overflows or a sewer overflows, you start getting streams running across the uh, across the road. Those would be hazards, just like hitting you know uh, white water uh, when you're doing the white water rafting thing. They will actually cause you to change direction if the water's going this way and you drive across it. It's going to push you this way. So in some cases you have to compensate. The other thing you got to watch out for is a spray from uh, other vehicles. Like when a motorcycle drives by you, you get a fair bit of spray. Cars are a lot of, a lot of spray too. Trucks, you can't see nothing if a truck goes by you. You just get this giant wall of spray and you won't be able to see, you won't be able to tell if your people up ahead are stopped or anything until the, you, that spray dissipates enough that you can actually see again. So you just, like I say, take your time, be careful, and be safe. The most important thing is, you know, get home so you can ride another day. Anyways, uh, hope you found that information useful. Desktalker uh, signing off.